Clifton Bond, we have a site which is familiar on so many lead grounds, ground reconstruction. Because at this very moment, a million and a half pounds is being spent by the football league clubs on ground improvements. And 180,000 pounds of that figure is being spent here at Upton Park by West Ham United. They've said goodbye to the old chicken run. In its place, a paddock on which will stand 4,000 people and that new stand to seat 3,500 people. It'll be ready in December. And at the moment, then, the ground is limited to a crowd of 38,000 people. And now the West Ham United side playing very, very well. Only one defeat so far this season. And the man on whom all the West Ham fans pin their goal hopes is the number 10, Jeff Hurst. And they're a little incensed because there's another newspaper story that a club is interested in him at a fee of £200,000. And that isn't enough to take Jeff Hurst away from West Ham, say the Hammers fans. Bobby Moore, the familiar figure, skipper of West Ham and skipper of England. And a man who's made a great deal of difference to the West Ham United defence is Alan Stevenson, the number five. £70,000 buy last season added real strength to the defence. West Bromwich Albion, the cup holders, without Osborne, the goalkeeper, but they are saying welcome back to the first team to number 11, Clive Clark, that dangerous winger playing his first game of the season. He was severely injured on the close season tour of Africa, now happily fit again. The man who makes the Albion buzz, the number 10, the Scottish international, Bobby Hope. The referee today, Mr. Clive Thomas of Wonder, the Morgan, youth club official, the Albion to kick off. Number nine, Jeff Astle, one of the most dangerous strikers in the game. And up we go. These two teams, both attacking specialists, so we could well see quite a lot of goals. So far this season, West Ham have got 12, the Albion have got 10. Both of them from six games. Good goalkeeping by Shepard, leading that through, through ball, seeing the dangerous Hurst came in. Best identification of the two teams, West Ham in the darkest shirts. West Ham giving away a free kick, and here's Brown for the Albion. Clark waiting on his left. This is Clark. Oh, and a bad mistake by Stevenson. Number nine, Jeb Astle, the man who almost nipped in then. Dennis Clark, there's no relation to Clive, the number 11. Dennis Clark, the back, spells his name with an E. Clive Clark doesn't. There's more to Charles. Voice. Big in midfield, his voice. Perhaps the absence of spectators on the far side could well cause the players to misjudge some of their passes over on that side of the field. West Ham again. Talbot following Hurst 
everywhere. Right opening by West West Ham and Tony Brown, the West Brown number eight has just had some attention to that ankle. Foul by Brooking. He was holding K off with his elbows. on Brooking and more coming up quickly with it great shot great save more caught everybody unprepared then has the whistle gone I, I think it has yes for offside against Aston Moore with the free kick. Okay, to Clark, now Brown. Williams. Out of play, yes, the flag's up. Number six, Moore. Five minutes gone and a great start by West Ham led by number six Bobby Moore but no score. has moved up as a third striker in the middle for West Ham. Peters. And he wasn't far away. He snatched so many vital goals for West Ham. Number four, Martin Peters. He's Brown. Brown to Hope. This is in the middle now. Seven red map for West Ham. More to Boyce. Assistant. And up comes Bonds on the right. This is Bonds number two. And Shepard in splendid form in this Albion goal. Great bit, bit of overlapping by Bonds number two for West Ham. Ball given against the Albion. Or to take the free kick. And has... Well, quite enough goal mouth incidents so far. West Ham have been finding so many gaps in this Albion defence. Peters has been playing an all-out attacking role throughout the whole of the match so far. Redman. Ten minutes gone, no score. Clark into Williams. Hope coming up on Williams' is right. Momentum gone out of this attack now. kick to the Albion and 
this dangerous spot, John Talbot has now raced up into the um, penalty area, the call number five. Hope is going to take this one. Talbot and Astle, two dangerous players upstairs, are waiting in the penalty area. Goes to Astle. Astle and a beautiful goal. No goal. No goal. It's disallowed. It is disallowed for Oxford. That's Astle. Man who put the ball into it. The linesman right on the spot. The referee gave a goal. The linesman in line with the play. Waved his left. Certainly the move deserved a goal for the album. Sever Brooking. Shepard, the Albion goalkeeper, had quite a lot to do so far. Brooking. He's going to play that back to Sissons. Back now to Redner. John Sissons and the splendid match really got the beating of this Albion defence with his skillful ball control. Okay, a good ball to Brown. He's got room in which to work. Clark Tree on the left. And Clark doing the obvious thing. He's well shadowed by Bonds. Clearance kicking by both goalkeepers has been very poor so far. Peters, number four in the dark shirt, really showed the value of running off the ball then. Notice him going forward, being shattered at the first. Now, number seven is red that, and Peters all alone now. He's run into space. Now, watch him make the ball do the work as he glides it past the goalkeeper. Brilliant goal. West Ham United deserve to be in the lead 1-0. They've kept up this all-out attack on the Albion. They've been trying to come forward all the time. One goal to nil. West Ham United in the lead. Number four, Martin Peters of West Ham, the club's top scorer this season. To Williams. Perfect pass of the ball, Bobby Hope. Love it.
He's far. He wasn't all that far away from it. Right far. to Peters who wanted Red Dapp a bit closer to him Sissons breaking beautiful bit of running by Sissons Johnny Sissons saw the chance there and went like a dart just five minutes left entertaining our first half West Ham it's worth more than a one-goal lead. They've been the more enterprising side, the more fire in attack. Johnny Sissons, number 11. Had a rare old time of it, dribbling splendidly. Great covering in this West Ham defence. Charles to Hurst. Sissons. No, Williams will be there first. Looked as if the pass was tailor made for Hurst. More. And Shepard saw that right at the last second. Another great shot by Moore. And Shepard is hurt. I think he hit the post. It's a magnificent save. That's the second one he's made from more in the match. And Moore deserves that rest. Shepard. Right? Yes. We can't afford another West Rob goalkeeper to be heard on television. If you remember, Osborne was hurt in the Charity Shield match, which we televised in match of the day. They're playing the injury time now. Clark to Hope. And the whistle goes for the end of the first half, with West Ham United leading by a goal to nil. The goal scored after 18 minutes by the number four, Peters. So far, West Ham's top goal scorer of the season with five to his credit. <laughs> At halftime, the crowd were happy enough with the 1-0 lead for West Ham, but a lot of them wondered whether it shouldn't have been one each. They recall the disallowed goal. Now, watch the West Brom player on the extreme left as he moves forward. He's the man to watch as Astle shoots now he's in an offside position this player on the left but he's behind the goalkeeper so could he really be said to be interfering with play do you think so and with all the fine attacking football in the first half I think we deserve more than the one goal that Martin Peters scored New H West Ham in the lead to start the second half of a match which it surely have pleased this big crowd and also the visitors like the youth footballers from the United States and also three officials from the Japanese Football Association who are here. Number 11, Sissons. Hurst. So West Ham starting off where they left off in the first half. It's Talbot for the Albion. Sissons there with him. Here's Sissons. Oh, great shot. Good goalkeeping by Shepard. Six yards out, out of the box. Narrowing the angle as Sissons sent back the shot. Shepard has had a fine match in the Albion goal. But a well-deserved reception from the West Ham crowd. Five minutes of the second half gone. 1-0 West Ham United lead. a 
lucky rebound for Redknapp. Hurst, Sissons. Once again, Dennis Clark there. To his namesake, Clive. Hoist to Redknapp. More to Peters. Albion, Reese to number eight, Brown. Not a good ball to hope, but Bonds hesitated to leave. When the heat is on, the Albion final pass is going astray. Far too often. the ball out of the goalkeeper's hands. It's quite a shot from Sissons. Quite a shot from number 11, Sissons. to voice and once again more coming up with the attack Peters more a very little chance of reaching that one well that's a beautiful ball from Hope to Brown Clark going onto the right wing up now comes Hope recovering so good in the West Ham defence never been in trouble at all in the game. Sissons Moore just, just behind him, here's Moore. Sissons has got the beauty of these backs, now Brooking. And, oh, a lucky one for Brooking, right to his head. I don't think he was able to head that ball, I think he hit his head. After the rebound from Williams. The Shepherd. Having an afternoon full of pressures and worries. Playing very well. Bonds to Hurst. A red down. Peters Clark taking care of him that time Reese to Brown two men on him now Brookie to Redknapp Stevenson, number five, has played Astle so well. Yes, K is injured. He got, he got a bang in the face. He...
second half and Peters has got another one Peters who already showed us the value of running off the ball now shows us how to bob up from nowhere and take a goal out of nothing Hurst is the man who makes it. This is Hurst with the ball now. It's a bewildering body swerve, getting the defence on the wrong foot, pulling players out of position. And still, no sign of Peters at all. And this ball seems to be covered, then here comes Peters. He's completely marked by Williams. And somehow or other, he takes that extra long stride, throws himself, and although it's a defender's ball, Peters manages to get his head to it, and the poor goalkeeper, Shepard, is left absolutely helpless. Now that's the sixth goal that Peters has scored this season out of a total of 14 by West Ham. Two goals to nil they lead in this game. Twenty minutes left now. Two nil, West Ham in the lead. Now Brooking. Job for the Albion, the K was in the way of that one. Number eight, Brown. Well okay, played by Charles. Charles had an unhappy time for a period last season, but now playing very well indeed. Now he's got back in the first team. Here comes Williams for the Albion. Fouling Bonds, Hill going him away. Free kick to West Ham United. Number nine, Jeff Astle, most dangerous forward, but been on his own so much this afternoon. So many times, too, he's placed the ball for free kicks, gone and fetched it for a throw in, made himself very popular with the crowd. Fine sporting player. Hope to Williams. Here comes Reese. And Hope on the left wing. Well, good effort by Hope. Bobby Hope. Rangers from Glasgow tried to sign just before the season began. Albion just refused to listen even at £100,000. Don't blame them. as far as some people can kick them. Bonds. West Ham to Sissons. Sissons just thirsting for a goal. It's so well, sent in so many good shots. Peter's gone forward. There's Peters laying it off for Hurst. Sissons. This is Hurst. Once again, this Albion defence, guilty of slack marking. But first of all, it's Sissons who torches them with this tremendous footwork, dribbling skill and body swerving. Then let Jeff Hurst take over. And already the defence is coming across to guard Hurst, who's already made one goal. 
and he's still trying to draw them out of position, create gaps, and now, as he centres, look at them. There are six defenders who've moved towards Hurst, including the goalkeeper. Behind them, they've left an enormous amount of space, which we can't see yet, but we will see in a moment exactly how West Ham use this space which has been given them. Because here into that space comes Redknapp, and nobody has a chance at all of stopping that one. His first goal of the season, West Ham's 15th. Tackle by Clive Clark, free kick to free kick to West Ham. Big fellas Hurst and Peters waiting in the penalty area. Making loose for Brooking, and a fine save by Shepard. He was going the wrong way, had to change his mind in mid-air almost. Williams to Brown. It's Reese to Hope. Uh, can they make capital out of that slip by Boyce? Four. Four to Peters. Sissons on the left. Hurst in the middle, and here's Sissons. But Clark will get it. No, he won't. And Peters! wisely drew back because but of course injury to himself and Talbot if he'd gone through with it then so. oh, rookie Left. The Albion three down coming forward on the attack. Hope and Clark begins to run. Barnes has looked after him so well this afternoon. Boyce to Hurst. Finding Peters now, Hurst. In comes Redknapp. That's one for Hurst. Peters, four. Peters has scored. That was another lovely Peters-Hurst tandem, wasn't it? This is Hurst with the ball, Redknapp on the far right, unmarked, but what's Peters number four? Racing into position, Clark is following him, but Clark is going to be drawn out of position and left stranded as Redknapp, here he is with the ball now, Redknapp centres, Clark is absolutely helpless, he's got three forwards to mark, he can't mark them all, and too late to the Albion notice Peters, and it's 4-0. Not a hat-trick in the old days, but regarded as a hat-trick these days. Oh. 
So, in the last 12 minutes, West Ham United have scored three goals. They now lead four goals to nil. Hope trying to pick up the pieces for the Albion. To Williams. And Peter's doing his stint in defence. In the middle of being followed everywhere by Talbots, but a beautiful header by Hurst. No wonder they paid two hundred thousand pounds for that man. But full marks to Rick Shepherd in the Albion goal. Beaten four times, but he's saved another four that could easily have gone in. Hope for the Albion and offside. Reese is offside. Still a most sporting side, despite the heaviness of their defeat. Albion, they never kick the ball away in temper or petulance. Always bring it back, place it for the free kick if one's given against them. It's Lovett. He decided to strike from defence. And the first time that Moore has seen even slightly worried. He still got, his, got out of trouble well, but he was a bit worried then. Charles de Brooking, now the voice. Fullback against fullback there. Hest. Back to Peters. Well, you can't say much about a fellow who's got three goals, can you? Speaks volumes for the value of a player like Martin Peters when he scored seven goals this season. Now here's Lovett. The Albion now thrown Kay, their number six, into the attack. Remember, he used to be centre forward. So well now, Peters to Boyce. Astle never given up trying out to Clark. And West Ham limber into action again. Redner. Clark out to Brown. to number eight Brown Reese offside K so it's just five minutes left West Ham United need one more goal to equal their record score for the season This is the man who might get it. Number four, Peters. To Moore. Sissons, Redknapp on the right, all alone. Here's Redknapp. Well, everyone has a go in this West Ham forward line, and Redknapp's already got one of the goals. Structure. 
action by Redknapp on Hope. Indirect free kick to the Albion. Hope going to take the free kick. Almost time now. It's Williams, Leon. Graham Williams, Welsh international, captain of the Albion. And the whistle goes for the end of the match. West Ham United have won by four goals to nil. Peters has got three of them. The other one was scored by Harry Redman. And Albion fans have no need to worry. A lot of teams could well lose by four goals against a team as smart as West Ham United. Are. Yes, that really was a wonderful performance by West Ham United and those three goals from Martin Peters gives him seven for the season and that makes him the top goal scorer in the first division. But seven in six matches, that's nothing. Bobby Lennox got five this afternoon in one match for Celtic who are just running away with their section in the Scottish League Cup. Two substitutes, Wilkes of Queen's Park Rangers and Chapman of Nottingham Forest came onto the field this afternoon and scored with their first kick of the ball but neither of them finished on the winning side. Bobby Tambling of Chelsea was carried off on a stretcher. He came back, but only lasted for two minutes and then had to go off again with a back injury. And Newport County, who had gone five games without scoring a goal, really broke the ice this afternoon. They won 4-1. Lincoln City, who this morning had a 100% record, really came a cropper. They lost five goals to nil. And now we can have a look at the first division results. Let's see what happened in some of the other games. And at Highbury, Aston were never really in trouble against Queen's Park Rangers. They had a 2-0 lead through McClintock and Neal from the penalty spot, so Queen's Park Rangers really in dire trouble. Only 12,936 people bothered to turn up to see Burnley play Coventry City. And that means that Burnley's three home games this season have attracted only 38,000 spectators. They really are the worst supported side in the first division. Cliff Jones, playing his first league game of the season, got Tottenham Hotspur's equaliser at Chelsea, and that got them one valuable point. And another Jones, Mick Jones this time, scored the only goal of the match for his club, Leeds United, against Liverpool. He scored after 28 minutes. Late goals at Manchester City. Bell scored for Manchester City near the end of the first half, and then Ray Crawford equalised for Ipswich Town near the end of the game. Now the other Manchester club, United, went to Sheffield Wednesday and attracted the biggest crowd of the day, 51,931. And they led at one time 4-2 but finished up losers by 5-4, despite the fact that Dennis Law got two goals for them. Jack Witham of Sheffield Wednesday was the star of the match, he got a hat-trick. The North East derby ended all square, one each. Robson scored for Newcastle United and then Suggett equalised for Sunderland. And Finally, a note about Leeds United. Their chairman, Alderman Percy Woodward, announced this evening that Leeds United will definitely play their Fair Cities Cup final second leg against Ferenc Varas in Budapest on September the 11th. Now, there's no change at the top of the first division. Arsenal still lead from Leeds and West Ham United, and Sheffield Wednesday have come up into fourth place. Now, BBC One, next week we've got midweek football for you at 10 minutes to 11 on Wednesday night. We'll be showing the highlights of one of the second round ties in the Football League Cup. A match of the day will be on your screens as usual next Saturday. So I hope you'll join us both Wednesday night and next Saturday night. Until then, good night.